Okay, good morning everybody. It's Dr. S here. And um, today's learning targets that we'll be looking at are targets G, H, I, and J. Uh, these targets have to do with some new concepts, the concepts of sound intensity, loudness. Um, we're also going to be uh, investigating how the sound is detected in the human ear. Uh, you're going to be learning about the decibel scale and what that is and how that relates to loudness. And finally, we will be um, talking about the hearing threshold curve uh, for people. Okay? Uh, the targets that we'll really address in this presentation are going to be G and I and J. And H is going to be something that you read about tonight. All right, so the first statement that we want to start with is the idea that the energy of a sound wave is directly proportional to the pressure variation between the compressions and the refractions. All right, well, what does that mean? Well, that means that a wave that carries a lot of energy is a wave in which the pressure changes very much in between a compression and a rarefaction. Okay, so we know that sound is a pressure wave, and it's that variation that produces the sound. But when the variation is big, that means when the high pressure and the low pressure are very different, that's when you have a lot of energy in the wave. So on the bottom here, if you were to look at the sound waves and visualize them kind of as transverse waves, a high energy wave would be a wave in which the amplitude was very large. Because remember, the amplitude is telling you about the variation in pressure. Okay, so, so a high energy wave would be something like that. And yes, a high energy wave is a wave that's louder, okay, because there's a greater pressure variation. And you can see a lower energy wave has less pressure variation. So that's a very basic idea about energy and, uh, and loudness. Now, we need to extend that idea and uh, define a new thing, quantity, called intensity. Uh, the intensity of a sound wave is the power that it delivers per unit area. Okay? Um, and so the connection here is that intensity is going to be equal to the energy delivered per unit time per unit area. So energy over time is equal to power. And so intensity is defined as equal to power divided by area. Now, area of what? Well, you could think of the area as being the area of your eardrum. So if you're listening to a sound that has a lot of intensity, that means that it's delivering a lot of watts per square meter of your eardrum, Okay, which kind of makes sense. So just kind of think about the area as being the area of your eardrum, uh, although it could be really the area of anything. So intensity is a unit, is, is a new quantity in, in, you know, it's related to energy, but it's the rate at which energy is delivered to a particular area. And uh, it has units of watts per square meter, which match up with the formula. Um, one of the ideas with intensity that's, that, you know, that may be common sense to you is the idea that when you get farther away from a sound source, the intensity will decrease since the sound is spread over a larger area. So backing away from a speaker makes it get less intense. So intensity is also related to loudness. Okay. And intensity is built on the idea of energy. Now, this is an, uh, a, tape, a graph which is actually in Holt, and it shows the difference. Um, it's a graph of intensity versus frequency. And these are called hearing curves. And these hearing curves actually indicate what we can hear, the frequencies we can hear, um, as human beings on average. So, for example, the threshold of hearing is the quietest sounds that we can hear. And it turns out that for frequencies around 500 to 5,000 hertz, we can hear sounds, we can just barely hear these sounds at very, very low intensities. So on the, on the vertical scale here are the intensities in watts per meter squared. And that's a very low number, 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared. So we're pretty good at hearing frequencies between 500 and 5,000 hertz. Now, as you go lower than 500 hertz, you can see that we need louder or, or more and more intense sounds to just barely hear them. And so by the time you get to 20 hertz, if you'll remember, we can't hear those sounds at all. So our sensitivity drops off as we go to lower frequencies on this graph. Our sensitivity also drops off as we approach 20,000 hertz on the right side of this graph. So this threshold of hearing curve is indicating the, you know, the sounds that we can hear as a function of frequency and how well we hear them. And of course, you have different regions here for speech and music. And up at the very top is called the threshold of pain, 
which is where these sounds become painful. At what intensities do they become painful? Now notice that the intensity range is very large. Uh, the intensity goes from 10 to the minus 12 all the way to 10 to the 0. That's 12 orders of magnitude. So once again, we see that our ears are remarkable because they're able to respond to a very large change in intensities, just like they're able to respond to a very large change in frequencies. Pretty amazing. Okay. Now, the fact that our ears are sensitive to such a wide range means that we need a different scale. Um, we would like to use a scale which kind of makes things more easy to deal with. So we're going to use a logarithm scale. And the idea would be that the loudness of a sound is related to the logarithm of the intensity. So, remember from math class, how do logs work? Uh, what a log does is it takes a very large number and it compresses it down to a smaller number. It's more manageable. So, for example, the log of 1,000, which is the same as the log of 10 to the third, is actually equal to 3. And, of course, these are base 10 logs. Um, you'll notice that if you take the exponent to the power of 10, the log is picking off the exponent and giving you that output. So the log of 0.1 would actually be equal to negative 1 because it's taking the exponent off. And so you take a very large range of values here, 1,000 to 0 0.003, and you can put them on a scale that's a little bit simpler. So when you measure loudness, we're going to use a scale that's called the decibel level, or sometimes the decibel scale. Um, decibels have kind of a funny symbol, dB, but it's sort of the beta B. And the formula is, is that the decibel level is equal to 10 multiplied by the log of the intensity of the sound divided by 10 to the minus 12. And this uh, gives us a scale which is nice and easy to use. So for example, if a sound has an intensity of 1 times 10 to the negative 6 watts per meter squared, you can calculate the sound level by taking 10 multiplied by the log of 10 to the negative 6 divided by 10 to the negative 12. Okay. Now notice, that gives you a big number. Uh, 10 to the minus 6 over 10 to the minus 12 is actually equal to 1 million. So 10 times the log of a million is equal to 10 times 6, or 60 decibels. So that's how you do the math. Notice we didn't even need a calculator for that. Uh, this table 2 is from your textbooks, and this gives uh, the typical decibel levels and intensities that correspond to common sounds that we hear. Uh, at the bottom of the scale, the quietest sound that we can hear is actually zero decibels. That's called the threshold of hearing. That's kind of your baseline. And then the sounds grow in intensity and in decibel level from there. And you can see that um, me talking to you right now might be a decibel level of about 50, depending on how loud the sub has this uh, video turned up. <laughs> Uh, but sounds can actually approach 100, and by the time you get to around 100 decibels, you know, your hearing is kind of going to be at risk <laughs> because these are very loud sounds. And when you get above 100 decibels, you're talking about sounds that it can actually damage your hearing after a little while. So we kind of like to be in an environment where the sound levels are less than 100. All right, final rule here, um, and here's how this works. This rule works by saying that the loudness of a sound that we perceive will double every time there's 10 decibels added to the decibel level. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let's say that you have a cheerleader doing a cheer at Main East, and the cheer is uh, a loud, uh, has a decibel level of 65. Um, if you were to take 10 cheerleaders, um, and the question would be, well, you know, how many decibels would they be? Well, the deal is, is that if you have 10 more cheerleaders, then the intensity becomes 10 times as great because you have 10 voices instead of one. Now, 10 voices means 10 times the intensity, but in terms of decibels, you simply add 10 decibels to that amount. So 65 becomes 75 decibels. And to our ears, we would say that this sound is twice as loud. It's pretty amazing. You would think 10 people are 10 times as loud as 1, but they're really not. If 10 people were 10 times as loud as 1, our eardrums would be blown away whenever we went to a pep rally. So the rule of thumb is that because the intensity increased by a factor of 10, that, and the decibel level increased by adding 10, that the loudness only doubles. So the question is, what happens if you go to 100 cheerleaders? Okay. 
Well, the intensity, I hope you can see, is going to go up to a factor of 100, because 100 times, there's 100 times the intensity of, of a single cheerleader. But the decibel level only goes up by 20. So 65 becomes 85. Okay, and this is because of that logarithmic scale. And the loudness scale only goes up by another factor of two. So instead of being two times as loud as one, you're now at four times as loud as one. There's a whole lot of physics in this, okay? And you have to kind of keep things straight. Intensity is different from decibel level. And there's a rule of thumb for using decibel level to find loudness. Okay, so I'm going to run through and I'm going to ask you guys to, uh, to think about this and I'm going to ask the substitute to pause the video in just a moment. And I'd like you to complete this table working with your clock partners or with whoever you're sitting by. Okay, see if you can figure out, um, you know, the intensity relative to a 30 decibel sound. And uh, these intensities are greater or less. And I'd like to see if you can use the decibel level, find it, and get loudness. Do not use a calculator. Okay, I want you to think about this a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're going to pause the video now, and I'll put the answers up as soon as you're done. Okay, so pause it, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so these are the answers. I'm going to ask the sub to pause the video here, so you guys can talk about these. So go ahead and pause. And let's go on to uh, one more example here. In this example, you have a 40 decibel sound. The 40 decibel sound has an intensity of 1 times 10 to the negative 8 watts per meter squared. Um, what I'd like you to do is, is to pause, and uh, I'd like you to see if you could um, determine the intensities of different sounds with different decibel levels, and could you estimate the loudnesses of those sounds relative to 40 decibels. So I'm going to ask the sub to pause the video right now, and I'll be back in a minute with the answers. Okay, and here we have um, the answers to that particular exercise. Um, check them out. See if you can uh, talk with your partner. See if these make sense to you. I'm going to ask the sub to pause the video at this point um, and let you guys talk this out a little bit. There might be some discussion about why the answers are the way they are. Okay, so please pause now. All right, and our last example here, which you'll find in the packet, is um, a couple of questions. Uh, sound A has an intensity of 1 times 10 to the negative 2 watts per square meter. Sound B has an intensity of 1 times 10 to the negative 5 watts per square meter. Uh, there are some questions below. Which sound is more intense? By what factor? Find the sound level of each in decibels. How many times louder is one sound than the other? And the last question here um, you'll need a calculator for and that is uh, the only question that you'll need a calculator for, and that is to find the intensity of sound C if it has twice the intensity of sound A. So, so far today, you're only using a calculator for one thing, and that would be at the very end. So I'm going to ask the sub to pause the video here, and um, when you're done, we'll put the answers up. Okay? All right, and uh, take a minute kind of debrief on, on the, the answers here, have a little discussion about what's going on. Okay, I'll let you guys discuss that. Um, that pretty much wraps up what we're going to be doing today. Um, there's a packet that you have uh, with some questions in it. I'd like you to work on those today and um, help each other out, work with your partners. Uh, please notice that at the on the last page of the packet there are um, reading assignments and resources from Holt and from the physics classroom. If you need some help during class today, I want you to go to those resources and use them. Um, if you don't, I'd like you to read them anyway, and you might do that over the weekend. So um, today I hope that we've uh, been successful in introducing the basic ideas of intensity, of decibel level, and of loudness and how those things are related. Uh, it's pretty interesting stuff. We talked a little bit about hearing curves and um, you know, you guys can do a little bit of practice and reading, and we'll, we'll talk again on this soon, okay? All right, signing off, Dr. Schultz.